Hello friends, after attending this section, you can decide whether you should choose Merchant Navy after your engineering degree. So let's start this section. In this section, I will cover the following 5 points about the profession, role of engineers in this profession, advantages and disadvantages in Merchant Navy, the opportunities and the life of a mariner. What is Merchant Navy? Merchant Navy is a fleet of commercial ships used for carrying cargo or passengers. The professionals working on these commercial ships are called mariners or sailors or seafarers or seamen and it has nothing to do with Navy. In ship, you can see two departments, engine department and deck department. Chief engineer is the head of engine department. Then comes second engineer, third engineer, fourth engineer and engine carrier. In engine department, you can see an electrical engineer, a fitter and fuel motorman. Captain is the overall in charge of the ship, but he is from the deck department. Other deck officers are chief officer, second officer, third officer and deck carrier. They are mainly responsible for the navigation of the ship. There are different types of cargo ships. First one is a container ship. The second one is a tanker ship. And in tanker itself, you have different, three different types. This chemical tankers, oil tankers and gas tankers. And this picture is an oil tanker. And the third type is cruise ships or passenger ships. And the fourth type is bulk carriers, which carry things in bulk. A marine engineer is a professional who is responsible for the operation, maintenance and repair of all major mechanical and engineered equipment on board a ship. The picture shows a main engine. Main engine is used for driving the propeller in a ship. If you can spot people working in this picture, then you got an idea of the size of machineries in a ship. The power of this engine is more than a lakh horsepower as compared to 400 to 500 horsepower for supercar engines. Other than main engine, you have to work on a lot more equipments like generator engines which supply power to the whole ship and there are 3-4 generators in a ship. Then you have to work on boilers. In tanker ships you can see huge boilers of very high capacity. Then comes purifiers for purifying the oil used for main engine, generator engine and boilers. There are thousands of pumps of different types and size like centrifugal pumps, reciprocating pumps, screw pumps, etc. We can add work on air conditioning equipment, electronic and electrical equipment, hydraulic equipment, etc. Since you are exposed to different kinds of machineries, you have ample opportunities in shore also. In this picture, you can see actual people working in a ship. As a junior engineer, when you join a ship, you have to do all kinds of work. Assist other engineers in their jobs. Assist senior engineers in paperwork. You have to do your learning part before becoming a responsible engineer. Fourth engineer and third engineer are responsible engineers. Second engineer and chief engineer are the senior most engineers in a ship. Main difference between shore job and onboard job is that you have to work physically in this profession along with other crew members. Normally, marine engineers are jack of all trade because you have to deal with a thousand variety of equipment and you have to make them working to run the ship and that's how we are being trained. Advantages of this profession It's a core mechanical job. You are being exposed to a lot of equipments and machineries and therefore you have ample opportunities in shore like production firms, shipbuilding firms, at ports, etc. Lucrative profession. You get financial freedom at an early stage of your career since you get attractive salaries. As a junior engineer, when you join a ship, you get a stipend of around $800 per month. And as you climb up the ladder to become a chief engineer, your salary will be around 10 lakhs per month. But this varies from company to company and also type of ship. As part of your career, you can travel around the world. Nowadays, the port stays are very less, but still you get a chance to see the world. 
three income is another advantage. If you sail for more than six months in a financial year, you don't have to pay tax in any country. While you are on board, you don't have any expenses since you get a five star food and accommodation free of cost. Most of the companies provide family carriage benefits for your wife and children, normally for senior ranks. Fresh air and water is also an added advantage. In the middle of the ocean, you get the purest air and normally people don't fall sick while you are on board mainly because of this. Standard companies provide internet facilities on board so that you can be in contact with your loved ones even when you are in the middle of the ocean. If you clear your exams for promotions conducted by Director General of Shipping India, which is a government body, you will get Certificate of Competency (COC), and the company will give you promotion depending on your appraisals. Compared to short job, promotions are very fast and depends on your clearing examinations. Long leaves. Since you go on contractual basis for 4 months or 6 months, after completing your contract, you can take long leaves during which you will be completely free of all responsibilities. Normally after becoming chief engineer, you have ample opportunities in show, like becoming superintendent and later become senior managers. Let's see the disadvantages. Even if you go for 4 or 6 months contract and if you are in the middle of ocean, when you complete your contract, you can't come back on time. For example, in this pandemic situation of COVID-19, most of the ports are not allowing sign-on or sign-off and your contract may get extended. Isolation from family and friends. During your junior ranks, you may feel isolated from your family and friends since you are on board a ship containing a maximum of 30 people. But still, that too will pass as you climb up the ladder to become senior officers. Hands-on job. As I explained before, you have to work with your hands physically and your hands will get dirty. Your boiler shoes in which you work also gets dirty. In the managing picture which I showed you earlier, if you want to do some maintenance, you have to go inside the engine and you will become dirty. But still, dirty hands are a sign of clean money. Next is extreme temperatures. Inside the engine room is normally hot and noisy because of working machineries. If you go to Gulf areas, engine room temperatures may go as high as 45 to 50 degrees Celsius. Extreme climate. Since the ship is sailing around the world, you have to face with different climate conditions. In polar regions, the temperatures may go to minus 20 or minus 30 degrees Celsius and in the tropical areas, the temperatures will be very high. Always, you have to be medically fit to work on a ship. Seasickness. As in the picture, the ocean may not be calm always. Even the biggest ships of 300 to 350 meter long can roll or pitch. Rolling and pitching are the moment of a ship. These can cause vomiting feeling or seasickness. But smooth sea never make a skilled sailor. This is pirate area transit. Since you are always sailing along with the ship, if the vessel is going to piracy areas like Somalia or Nigeria, you have to go there. But the company will provide you armed guards and other safety equipments. Here also, as compared to the number of ships sailing in ocean, the hijacked ships are very negligible. Not, the next disadvantage is it's not a regular hour job. If you face some machinery breakdown, you have to work day and night and fix that problem. And you can't tell that this out of your working hours. Here comes the most important section. How to become a mariner. There are different companies and institutes in this field and I have listed a few of them. If you make up your mind to become a marine engineer after your BTEC or BE, you have to do a one year GME that is graduate marine engineering course. And for that, the best way I would suggest is to go to different company websites instead of institution websites and they will provide procedures for obtaining a sponsorship letter. 
A sponsorship letter just gives you an assurance that you will be placed in any of the ships if you complete your GMB course successfully. But still, you have to pay the fees for GMB course. I'm stressing on the sponsorship letter since in internet, if you check for institutes, you can see a lot of them all approved institutes, but after completing your GMB course from these institutes, you may not get placed and if you are not placed, then it is a complete waste of your time and money. And you should not get cheated like that. Nowadays, most of the shipping companies have their own institutes and they conduct online tests and interview and send students to their college with sponsorship letter. Then at least you are sure that you get a placement in their ship after completing your GMA successfully. You can see few shipping companies and their respective training institutes in the slide. When I took a webinar for mechanical engineering students in Vidya Academy of Science and Technology, many students asked me for links of websites for sponsorship and therefore I am providing few website links in the description area for your quick reference. These are the required qualifications for applying for GME course and this may vary slightly from company to company and when you go through the company website you can read it more. For BTEC minimum of 60% and 60% in final year. In total you should have 60% in PCM that is Physics, Chemistry and Max. Then English 50% in both 10th and 12th and your age limit should be 28 when you start your course. Physical and medical standards as per DGS guidelines is given in the DG site. More details on online tests, psychometric tests, interviews are available in respective company sites. And if you need more guidance, please comment below so that I can prepare a video for that. Now comes life of a mariner. Life of a mariner starts as a GME student, which is 8 months in an institute and 4 months on board a ship or a training ship. And this is the introduction to marine life. From the chart, you can see the stages of your life as a marine engineer. Your salary at different ranks, but it depends on company to company and type of ship. Also, you can see how many months minimum sea time you require in each rank for appearing for examination to next lab. And thank you. Let your dreams succeed.